remember to record. This is a disclaimer. The following is not the anime Jujutsu Kaisen. If you come to YouTube looking for the <laughs> anime Jujutsu Kaisen, get a Crunchyroll account. Go go anywhere else. This is not <laughs> this is not the anime. We keep having people show up to watch this show thinking that this is the actual just episodes put up. It's not. It literally says featuring Zenrado. What show? The show is not named Jujutsu Kaisen featuring Zenrado. <laughs> Please go somewhere else. You have been warned. Intro kick in now. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki, and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What Shonen Archive, I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching the entirety of every single Shonen Jump. Uh, I was going to say manga, but that's not what we're doing. That's a completely different show. <laughs> that's uh, every Shonen Jump uh, anime that is currently out and in existence. And also, in, we, will, we will cover any of the live action stuff. I should mention that because Gintama does have live action and there's plenty of bad live actions like the Netflix uh Death Note and then the good ones like the Netflix One Piece. <laughs> that... Yeah. <laughs> it runs the game. Which Netflix I watched that really all over the place. Yeah, it really is. How hilarious did it go from going like, oh yeah, they messed up Death Note but they nailed <laughs> One Piece? That makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, cuz cuz One Piece should be the difficult one. And Death Note should be the easy one. Yeah, it's such an easy Grand Slam. You have no idea how easy it would be to translate over Death Note, and yet they somehow fumbled so hard. And that's what we plan to do, and hopefully someday soon we'll even be able to cover that uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Lost uh, Lost movie, which keeps... at this oh, point. if only, dude. Yes. I wish. We, I do an update every couple months, but now it's it was uploaded... But no one was quick enough to get it before it all went down, I think. I think it was like the report is like some people were able to grab it, but not enough people to make it be like, okay, now it's widely out there. But at least we know it does exist. So. God, I need that in my life. I need it. So I need to see how bad it is. I need to know. <laughs> I need to know. Yeah, for it to be so bad that they were like, this needs to be burnt out of existence i have to see how bad it is yes i 100 percent agree with you and today we're going to be talking about jujutsu kaisen which is episodes 30 31 32 33 and uh before we start i think we should be best to say we will try our best to not bring up any of the manga stuff just know it's been very hard for a lot there's of there's gonna be a lot of spongebob dolphin sounds I will remember uh, in this that. one where I inevitably say it. Yeah, yeah. You have to go back. A lot of wokey edits are, are going to be coming in. It's going to be. It's really going to be hard. Even I. Even while I was watching this, I was like, mm. "It's going to be very hard when we get to the end." I'm going to tell you this right now. There's just going to be nonstop SpongeBob. I might actually just release. Hey, do you want to just hear the uncensored <laughs> version of this conversation? Because it's going to take a while. The uncensored audio. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do. But for that reason, there's just going to be nothing but large dolphin noises. <laughs> for it as it, as people go like okay yeah sure but yeah because yeah but we'll we'll try our best but if you hear a dolphin noise it means <laughs> it's a spoiler for the it manga. means we couldn't control ourselves yeah it's yeah. a manga spoiler we couldn't hold back and you if you somehow have not been spoiled you must be off of twitter which i commend you for it it is hard you have Duolingo out here spoiling people. It is not easy to not catch these trays. That was crazy that Duolingo did it. That was the part where I was like, God <sighs> damn, this is huge. This is so much bigger than I thought. <laughs> anyway, let's get right into it, Zen. Why don't you tell us what happened in Jujutsu Kaisen episode 30. It's like that. That's the name of the episode. Episode 30, uh, we open with the gang trying to make plans, and no one wants to hang out with Yuji, and they don't want to go see his movie. Um, I don't remember the movie name. They don't want to go <laughs> see the movie. I keep thinking it's called, like, Earthworm Jim, but no, I think it's, like, Human Earthworm 4. The Human Earthworm, yeah. They don't want to go see the Human Earthworm. Uh, so they all go their separate ways, and we see, like, a teenage girl, like, ominously watching them. Um Toto and Maymay are hanging out, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to recommend these guys for a promotion to grade one. That's awesome. 
Uh, and Toto's like, yeah, I'm going to get to hang out with my with my bro all the time. And then Mamie's like, no, you can't because you're not allowed to uh, hang out with or you're not allowed to like go on missions with the person you're trying to promote. And he's like, he has like a breakdown. <laughs> he um, does. Yeah, he like freaks out. Uh, the ominous girl eventually um, asks Nobara about Yuji and confirms eventually that um, she has a crush on Yuji. That's where the It's Like That uh, episode title comes from. Because first Nobara says it, and then Nobara gets Megami dropped off as well, and he also says It's Like That <laughs> to them <laughs> in excitement. Um she changed her look and everything, and she said she just wants to meet Yuji again. And as soon as they meet up, uh, Yuji's like, "Oh, it's you!" And it's like, "I, uh, you know, recognize you immediately." I think she was like, "She's like chubby." That was her thing. Yeah, she, she used to be chubby and small, and she looks. Yeah. Com- there, it's like a complete, like different hair color. Everything. This woman is yeah. completely changed. But he is he's able to recognize her. He remembers able her. to recognize her immediately. Yeah, and. Uh, she like remembers that Yuji was always better than that, and so she uh, almost feels like she like a like she feels bad for like I'm gonna impress him because she, like, she didn't need to because he's just a nice a nice boy. So she kind of leaves. Um, Nobara reveals that she got the phone number, so she can always give it to Yuji later. And then Yuji's like, "Hey, let's go to the movies," and they're like, "Ah, oh, fuck, okay." And then it's a very nice hanging out with the trio after not seeing them for so long. Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's a nice little, like, much-needed just time for them to hang out. Um, they go looking into the the mole because they know there's, like, a traitor. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they figure it must be dolphin noise for my hero. <laughs> my <gosh. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> they uh they realize that it must be Mekamaru because he's the only one that could have done it uh because of his his particular ability um they end up finding out that that the lair that he's in is is fake uh which confirms that he was in fact the bad guy and uh Geto and Mahito make like a binding vow with him, and they're like, "If you give us info on the school, I'll fix you." Because you know he has like the fucked up body, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and Mahito can fix that with his with his technique. Like he can he can fix his soul so that he's like normal. Um, Mahito's like, "Fuck it, I'll just kill him." And then Geto's like, "You really can't just do that because the binding vow will destroy you if you do that." So he's like, "Okay, I I won't do that." Um, so he does end up healing them, and so then once the vow is fulfilled, they can fight. Like they don't, they don't have to. The, the, he's he's done the thing, and now he's no longer bound by the rules of it. Um, so they start to fight, and then he's pretty strong because he had all that cursed energy built up over the years from his like awful condition. Um, he's piloting like a mecha, like a mecha suit, and he's uh, he's taking on Mahito, and he has a bunch of these bottles that he used that are like packed with his cursed energy that he like fills them up in these capsules and uh he throws a a year's worth of of energy at mahito and then we end the episode with them clashing Mm. and there's no juju stroll they did not bring it back for this (laughs) (laughs) i was wondering if they would they do they do something not 100 percent similar but they have the characters like talking and be like oh yeah 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 but probably didn't want to, because, you know, this is a very serious arc with very serious stuff, so they didn't want to, I guess, make it too silly, is my guess, anyway. But yeah, that's episode 30. Um, How'd you end up feeling about this one, Zen? It was fine. I, I don't really care for this little portion of it. I mean, I liked the stuff with, like, the kids. Um, I don't really care that much about Mechamaru and his fight with Mahito. Like, I just don't. It's fine. I think, uh, yeah. The, I'll, I'm not really in, emotionally invested in uh, Mechamaru. Mechamaru. You're not a biggest so. fan of the man named Mechamaru when he gets into what giant Mecha Mechamaru? <laughs> yeah, Mechamaru gets into the Mecha Maru Mecha. Uh, and it and turns into a completely just, different anime for like the next yeah, <laughs> episode. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's whatever. It's, it's like, yeah, it's a little bit. It's fine. It, it is fine. It does look real nice and it does. It's an interesting 
kind of like go for it but i'm also kind of with you on this one where it's like yeah the mole is mechamaru yeah i feel like moles only really work when it's a character you kind of actually like you have to like care yeah you have to like really give a shit and and, and they and they pick the one dude from that team that almost no, almost nobody would really like all that much. <laughs> like the easiest, and most disposable one, being Mechamaru. And to be fair, he tries to make it like see, like oh yeah, here's his. But also, his motivations kind of make no sense. Like, I guess I understand him wanting to get the new body, and they'll kind of go into this in the next episode. It seems he really wants to see his friends actually in person. But he's not going to be able to see him because he's going to Omega fucking jail because <laughs> he kind of broke a lot of laws to get this yeah. body back. <laughs> His... Yeah, super, super cursed jail. Yeah, he's got he's going away for a long time, buddy. He's got like the... it doesn't make sense in that way. It's like it feels like he's really just kind of screwed over. And then also it just in general. This is something I've felt ever since Mahito first showed up. I hate seeing Mahito fight. Because Mahito gets his ass kicked, and then he wins. Yeah. It is the most infuriating thing. And it would be better if the character was, like, cool. But the character's not cool. Mahito's an asshole, and I hate him. And the more he lives, I keep going, like... It's super weird, because there are characters that can kind of survive and win fights, and I'm like, ah, yeah, he wins, because he's the ultimate bad guy. But then there's a certain class of bad guy where I'm just like, I just actually want to see you die, and you're not dying. And that's the worst part, is that every Mahito fight goes, looks like Mahito has died. No, he wins. And it's over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It makes it very the annoying. Whole, like uh, I'm, I, you have to hit my soul or you can't beat me. Thing it's like, man, shut the fuck up. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like this every single time, and it's just not. I, I just can never get behind him fighting. Almost any other bad guy, I'm down to see fight, but it's never with Maito. I'm never feeling it with him. <laughs> the only time I'm really ever happy to see him fight is when it's with Yuji and he's getting his ass kicked because he's getting like 50 hands at, <laughs> in 20 seconds. That's about the only time. Everyone else usually fails to hurt him or do anything of any real value to him. But anyway, that's him. To go to the part of this episode that I actually really did like, I really did like all the stuff with Yuji and like him just having like a, a normal life and having like a normal like teenager life. Um... It's really nice to see all the characters together and just, like, playing off of each other and being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go see, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go see this horror movie. Do you want to check, do you want to come with me? And then Nobra's like, no, nah, that sounds dumb. I'm not going to watch some art form movie. And then he's like, no, I'm not going to watch a horror movie. He's like, no, 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 it's not a horror movie. Let me tell you why I think this is actually a romance. And then he shows, like, the plot synopsis of it. And it ends with, like, a bunch of art form babies coming out of it at the end because he found love with somebody. Because, like, it's actually a love story. She's like... Uh, listen, I'm not gonna be watching, uh, I, they don't call it this, but I keep, like, Earthworm Jim. Like, they keep calling it the wrong name of the movie. They call it, they call it, like, something like, <laughs> wor- Worm Chojin or something. It's like, that's, that's not the name of the movie. It's like, that's great. Anyway, I'm going shopping. Do you want to come with me? I literally just said I'm going to the movies. All right, you're lost. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> and they leave. That's really funny. Um... The part where Toto realizes when he's playing the game and he's like, oh, I'm not going to be with him. And he has like a complete mental breakdown. Where Yeah, the- he like shuts down <laughs> mentally. It's really funny. It is. That they showed the ping pong game. He wasn't even close to winning it. He was like, he was, like fighting. Yeah, he's getting blasted. <laughs> Absolutely getting destroyed at it, which is really funny. Um, when uh, Nobara is talking to Yuki, I think it's super funny because when she's like, it's like that. And then it's like super like undetailed art. And he's like, it's like that. It's like, okay, real shit. Let me quickly call in my Yuji expert. <laughs> and they bring in uh, Megumi and he's like, they ask him. And then they start like fucking busting his chops saying like, you seem like the kind of guy who only drinks black coffee to impress girls. He's like, first of all, shut up. I always drink black coffee. And second of all, you called me here. <laughs> Why am I... <laughs> Um, I also like when they hit him with a it's like that. They're like, okay. And then when they text him, they when they text Yuji is maybe one of the funniest things. She's like, come over here. Why? Come over here. Okay. And <laughs> he just shows up like in like less than two seconds after replying like that. It's really funny. It really shows like what kind of guy Yuji is. Of like, okay, someone wants to call me here. It must be for a reason. I'm out here. Peace out. I don't need the long explanation. 
Uh, I like the bit where she says, like, oh, the worst thing a girl can hear that has been longing for a dude is to hear him say, and you are. And and then he when he doesn't do that, <laughs> the way that both uh, Nobra and Megumi pull up a 10 out of 10 sign <laughs> to yeah. give him full, full marks, <laughs> full, points. full points, that's really funny. Um the little scene, uh, the little scene where he they talk about his um, his like about women because I remember one of the things he's when they asked me he's like what kind of women does he like he's like I remember he likes tall women and then the girl's like holy shit I have a shot and then she's like holy shit you got a shot <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny it's really nice it's also very cute and then the way the, the, the it's so sad too because when the girl actually is gonna try and like ask him about stuff she can't bring it to herself because she realizes that. Um, she's gonna ask him in a way that would feel like what she wouldn't have wanted when she was fat. She wanted someone who would just accept her for who she was, and she had that one with Yuji, and then she thinks that just because she's no longer like that, that Yuji will like her now, and now she feels like... It's like second-guessing yourself, which is something that I think a lot of people, specifically who deal like with weight issues, they can feel a little bit like an imposter syndrome, where it's like, I just don't feel like I deserve any form of love. And I, it's actually kind of nice to see that played in an anime in a very much like a, well, this is an issue. And then they're like, well, she didn't have it in her, but you know what? I have her number. It's okay. Maybe we'll try again. She still has st- stuff to work on for herself before she can really, you know, devote herself yeah. to Yuji. And I think that's a very nice, well thought out character for someone who shows up for a little silly bit. And I think it's very well done. And yeah, I absolutely love this shit. I am a big proponent of Yuji. I love Yuji. I think the people who talk shit on Yuji, I think, are bad people. Because, <laughs> similar to my feelings towards Jonathan Joestar, where it is, I can never hate a character whose character is, I'm a very good person. <laughs> and that I'm is a what... Good guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm just a, like a nice guy. It's like, well, you're boring. It's like, I don't give a fuck. This guy is <laughs> literally the happiest, like, just, hey, man, how's it going? How you doing? I'm just a really nice guy, and it's it's ve- it's a very like endearing trait to me. So I love Yuji, and I love that they got to show that side of him and how like relaxed and laid back he is. And in general, to see him with the the crew, because you know some the, they are not together for the next arc at the beginning because they are all with different masters at the at the start of it. So that this is basically it for us in terms of going into Shibuya. Uh, and yeah, uh, like I said, that beginning half really awesome, and then <laughs> Mega Mario is there too. <laughs> Honestly, I could have just taken an entire episode of just those three hanging out, and that would be perfect. Yeah, okay with that. Yeah, I just don't care about the Mega Mario stuff at all. Yeah, which which is just it's funny because it is a lot of like action and like really well animated action, but you know. I don't always need that. Maybe just having yeah, someone. Yeah, it's it's like watching two action figures fight. Who cares about these two? Yeah, and then I also like that ending where he says like, "All right, everyone, let's go out and watch my movie," and he automatically invited the two of them, even though both of them were like, "I don't remember ever promising we were gonna go see a movie together." Yeah, he's like, "I don't want to go," and he's like, "All right, we're going. Let's go, team." <laughs> I also, also really like that moment with uh, Nobro where she's like, I feel a, a ting in my heart when she asks, like, are you interested in Yuji? She's like, no, absolutely not, no. And then later on at the end, she's like, why did I feel that ting in my heart? And then at the end when she's talking to Megumi, I realized what it was. It was pure rage at the idea of Yuji getting a girlfriend before I got a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before she did. Which is really good. Uh, really funny. And good stuff. So yeah, the, half, the beginning of this thumbs up the middle to the end of this thumbs middle (laughs) i think that's fair and also the this is the first time we get to see that new op that they have for shibuya which is really good (laughs) it is good yeah i don't know if i like it as much as the previous one than the previous one yeah no the previous one one was really good it's really good but this one i kind of like the like the the idea of like all these characters walking it feels like you know shit's about to go down you know what i'm saying it's definitely one of like one of those OP similar to the ones like the Naruto ones where there's like thirty dudes all ready to fight one guy. <laughs> it's like one of those yeah. OP. <laughs> yeah. It's like you know shit's about to go down. But I definitely did like the the previous one more. But I still I still think this one's pretty good. But yeah, that's episode thirty. It's like that. And we don't have to come up with a name like that one because this one is a perfectly acceptable name for this episode. Yeah. So let's go on to the next one. Episode thirty one, Evening Festival. 
Go ahead, Zen. Tell us how Mekumaru is uh, doing now. <laughs> they, sure, they sure do be fighting. Uh, they just be fighting like crazy. Big robot Mekumaru is using his Gundam weapons. And Mahito is like, I, uh, don't hit me with your Gundam weapons. And they're running around. Uh, Mahito, there actually is a cool sequence in it where Mahito like, turns into a bunch of different animals. Mm -hmm. He's like, to dodge all the moves. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Um, Mahito ends up opening up his uh, domain expansion. Uh, and then uh, Mahito's like, aha, I'm in there. And then one of the robots gets him, and he's like, ha, I got, I got you with uh, my technique, because I have... He has, like, cursed techniques, or, or I guess it's not a cursed technique, but he has, like, a, an ability loaded into one of his uh, capsules, which is simple domain, which is the thing that, um, like, Miwa uses, used earlier, where you kind of make that little domain around yourself uh, to protect him from... The domain expansion from Mahito. Uh, Mahito like explodes, and he's like, "Yeah, I got him. All right." Uh, and then it ends up with uh, Mahito busting in and being like, "Actually, I'm fine." And uh, he gets him. He, he gets him. There's a little scene where Miwa is sitting with one of the puppets, and she's like, "I want us to hang out. Like, I want us to become really good friends. I, I, or, you know, I like you. I guess I don't know how she got a crush on a robot, but she did get a crush on the robot." Um, and she doesn't realize that the robot's are already dead. It's actually a little sad. It's a little sad. It is. A as much sad. as I don't give a shit about Mechamaro, it's a little sad. I actually do care about uh, her, though. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Big yeah. Gojo fan. She's not... <laughs> she's she's going, just like me, for she's real. She's just like me going through it. <laughs> no one is having a harder time. <laughs> Fuck, I have the dolphin noises. No one's going for a harder time than her. <laughs> oh, man. Um... Uh... Then the Shibuya incident kind of starts. Um, they see there's a, a curtain lowered over the area. Sorcerers arrive, and it's like a bunch of people. Um, and they're like, alright, we gotta we gotta stay out here, and we'll kill any spirits that get past Gojo, if any of them do. And then Gojo goes inside the barrier by himself. Mm -hmm. and that's where the episode ends. Um, okay, this fight... I like Mechamaru's plan, which is I just have to wait for Gojo. It's a very good plan. It's maybe the smartest plan any character outside of Gojo has ever made. Yeah. <laughs> Where his entire plan is, if I can call Gojo, he can actually save these, because I don't think I could actually do it by myself, <laughs> even with the... Yeah, I like... There's so many times where the character's like, okay... I really gotta get Gojo now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's never been a character more self-aware than in this moment where Rekamaru says, okay, this situation is super easy, just call up Gojo, and I'll be uh -huh. fine. <laughs> or, and by the end of it, he starts making, saying, like, well, if I can warn him about Shibuya, I think that would probably be, be, be enough, at least. If, there's, if anything, if I can't make it out of this, maybe at least telling him about Shibuya would be enough, but, of course, he's not able to do any of them. The fight here actually is uh, really well animated. I really do like it. Like you said, the, the like the changing from the many different animals. Like he goes from like a rat to a to a bird. Like to a, a it's like a mole or something at one point where he like yeah, digs out of the ground. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It is really cool. There, the credit where credit is due. Even if I don't care about the fight, there is a lot of cool sequences in it. He's got like his Gurren Lagan shit going on with this mech. He is shooting like rainbows out of it, out of yeah, the mech. Yeah, like rainbow laser beams and stuff. Yeah, like I, it's also really funny because uh, when uh, Mahito actually does pierce through the uh, through the giant Mechamaru, he he uses a drill, <laughs> which is pretty funny because I was like, oh yeah, that's the ultimate. Just like yeah, that that reminds me the most of Grand Lagan. You literally pierced it through through a drill. It all makes perfect sense here now. Um, I like that. I also like that scene where he's inside the domain and he's like the giant robot is like slowly coming offline, and he's just like, ah, oh, yeah, man, I've won. I've never. There's never been a winner of this fight more than me, Mahito. Let me just turn my back real quick. Ah, oh, I've been stabbed. Yeah, <laughs> it is maybe the funniest way anyone has ever been stabbed. He's just like, man. I actually think the ultimate sign of I've lost this fight is saying, I've won this fight. Because it happens twice in here. Mahito says it once here, where he goes, I've won this. Oh, man. I'm so great. And then he gets stabbed. 
And then at the end, when Mechamaru goes, oh man, I beat Mahito, and I have like nine years to spare to fight Ghetto, let's fucking go, and then he dies? Yeah. There's, there's <laughs> I don't think, an easier way to show that you've lost the fight than to say, I've won the fight. And I've just... won the fight now, yeah. If anything, it is an amazing thing. Yeah, the, just, the, just the fact that it happens twice in this one episode is kind of amazing. Um... Yeah, and then, like you said, some of the other stuff, Miwa talking to the sleeping Mechamaru, um, and you kind of see a little bit more. I guess you can kind of understand why he's just like, you know what? Because <laughs> when, it, when, it, when you see him in the robot, which is actually a really cool shot of the robot, when he's talking about, like, I'm going to go see my friends, you actually do see all the pictures of all the people there. But I do think it's funny that whenever you show the inner side of his mind, all he thinks of is Miwa. <laughs> and that's the only person that comes to mind it's like it's not like any of the other ones it's just immediately me what but then you when you see him in the the robot and the like the screens are all around him it's all of them so you can see that he wanted to see him but of course alas he was not there was no way in hell that he was going to beat both ghetto and mahito that's just that just wasn't happening my guy <laughs> that was that was a, a fool's errand but you know what he did try it at least i'll give him credit for at least trying he died as he lived, sitting down. And yeah, and then they show the beginning of the Shibuya incident, and I remember this being pretty cool, because it happens on October 31st, right? Yep. So everyone's dressed up for Halloween. They're having a good time. I don't know if it's this one or the next one, but there's a dude dressed up as the Joker, which is pretty funny. Um... <laughs> And yeah, in general, they're all having like a good time, and then shit breaks loose, and it really does feel like, okay, something's going down in Shibuya, all these people are saying like, hey, bring out Gojo, they shouldn't know who Gojo is, this is clearly a trap, we're bringing in Gojo, <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah, and they're all like, this is very obviously... Like, a orchestrated, but also Gojo's will be fine. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I really think it shows how much the they just rely on Gojo to solve anything. Is that even when it seems tailor-made to be a trap for Gojo, they're still like, not an issue, Gojo's got this. <laughs> There's a level of just like pure uh, trust in the level of how crazy fucking good at what he does is. It, that, that Gojo has that they're just like no it's it should be fine we shouldn't have an issue and yeah I thought it was a very good interesting setup for Shibuya at least and we'll get more into Shibuya in the next episode and yeah overall I, I ended up being good with this episode I ended up thinking like that's an enjoyable episode even as someone who doesn't super care about Mechamaru all that much I did think the Miwa moment was pretty nice and the fight itself was extremely well done and yeah the start of, of shibuya was uh pretty nice how do you feel zan uh yeah it was fine it was like whatever up until the beginning of the shibuya part i thought that was pretty cool mm -hmm. um and you know as as someone who knows what happens here i feel like there was a lot of tension but i i, I imagine it was pretty tense even for people who don't really know what's going on because it's you know it's been built up to ahead of this um, it definitely yeah. has that air of like, oh shit, like it's something is starting, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, in general, the way that they, it almost makes it feel like when they start talking about, um, Shibuya, it feels like a documentary. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Where they're like, at this cer certain time, this happened, something in Shibuya happened at this point, Gojo arrives on the scene and it, it uh -huh. definitely feels like, okay. There's just something about that that elevates it from a lot of the other stuff. Is going. It's like something bad goes down. Yeah, um, like this is serious. Yes. <laughs> Someone doesn't start narrating you to you uh, about what's about to go down unless it's some form of serious. And yeah, we will see how serious it is as we'll go into the next episode. Episode uh, 32. The Shibuya Incident. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what's going on in this specific Shibuya incident, which is actually more <laughs> Yuji fighting some kind of cricket monster. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Uh, Gojo goes in, and there, you know, he meets up with all the cursed spirit guys, just kind of the cursed group, the bad guy group. They're all there together. Um, the rest of them are kind of out and about, like uh, getting ready to go in. And Yuji's like, I want to go fight with Gojo. And Mamie's like, I should do that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> she just comes with me. Yeah. Um, Yuji realizes that Mahito is there because there's transfigured humans attacking people. Um, and so they start making a plan. Meime goes to deal with the transfigured humans. Yuji rushes in, and he finds the grasshopper monster eating a person. Um, and the grasshopper's like, Haha, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a smart guy. Um, Yuji's like, where's, where's Mahito? And the grasshopper's like, oh, you mean Mahito? <laughs> um, <laughs> and so they go to fight uh, for a little bit. And then the spirit's like, uh-oh, I gotta guard these things so the barrier won't go down. Because the, the curse spirit's whole thing is he's like, I'm super smart, but actually he's like a fucking idiot. Mm-hmm. Um, they fight for a little bit, and the grasshopper like starts talking shit. Um, and then you just kind of beats the shit out of it. Like, it's... It's it's definitely just supposed to be like a hey, Yuji's pretty strong now moment. Yeah. Um, he beats the absolute fucking literally the dick off this thing. Um, he does. He does. He's just yeah, whooping yeah, he the does. shit out of him. He beats the shit out of it and then he he like uses his little like I guess it's supposed to be a stinger but it just looks like a sharp dick. It does. Uh and Yuji rips it off. Clean. Um, and so uh, my was like, ah, shit. The uh, I think the barrier's down, guys. And then um, and spoilers: the grasshopper we left to go defend the barrier got murdered. Yeah, the, the the one guard we left that was a fucking grasshopper. Um, and then it cuts back to Gojo and the gang, or the the bad guy gang, I guess. Uh, and they're using a new ability called domain amplification. Um, that essentially neutralizes. Gojo's technique, but then it ends up not actually mattering all that much because uh, Gojo's they're like, oh my god, we got him on the run and then he's like, no <laughs> no, I'm gonna kill you both and then the episode ends <laughs> pretty good, pretty good end of the episode, okay this one, let me start by saying how I feel about it, um, first of all this grasshopper they really try and build up this grasshopper which is something that they've tried that they I think they do in general, which is something I actually really like when they get into like the crazy like nitty gritty details of stuff. But maybe it's maybe the most silliest when it comes to this grasshopper because they're like this grasshopper. Yeah, it's a curse born from humanity's ill will towards the locust plague. Now let me just quickly tell you about the physical capabilities of a grasshopper. Let me tell you. The, let me think. Of really, it's like <laughs> this, bro, bro. <laughs> stop, <laughs> please. And I'm already humoring that this grasshopper is fighting yuji don't try and build up this fucking grasshopper to me don't don't treat him for more than what he is which is what he he's something to get his ass kicked real quick before we get into some of the more other gas before he has to fight something harder don't <laughs> appreciate it but please don't just don't <laughs> stop yeah it's not that serious it's not that serious he does not deserve it's kind of like remember when uh we were talking about chainsaw man and he was fighting, like, the most nothing devil in, like, the early stages, and they animated it in hilariously well-detailed. Yeah, like, way too well. Yeah, way too well-detailed. I feel like they did that for Grasshopper, except for the animation was on point, but instead his backstory got crazy detailed instead. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I remember hearing some people saying, like, oh, yeah, this is not animated well, and I was like... This is animated perfectly fine. He's fighting a fucking grasshopper. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where, like, oh, my God, this is not very good looking. And I, I kind of agree, like, it's not. But also, who huh. gives a shit? It's, who it's fucking not, cares? It's not, like, the worst, but it's also not the best. But at the same time, it's on the level of what I would want from this. Where it's like, yeah, that's about as much effort. Like, he has a bunch of spots on him. And obviously, we both are Dragon Ball fans. We both understand that if something has spots, it's actually a murder for anyone to animate it, which is why Cell very rarely ever came back, <laughs> because Cell uh-huh. has a bunch of little dots all over his body, and it's very annoying to actually animate that in practice and draw it over and over and over again. So yeah, this the fact that this grasshopper is like mostly 3D animated, and a, most of the animation is like quick JoJo-like punches, where it's like, that's perfectly fine with me. It's It's acceptable for what it is. 
I would rather them focus on, like, the important stuff, which would be the Gojo stuff, which, coming up into the next episode, I think they 100% <laughs> nailed it on that. Uh, but for what this grasshopper is, I thought it was perfectly fine. I really like that shot of Yuji when he's, like, got fucking, like, glowing hands and the grasshopper grasshopper is looking at him and it's just, like, terrifying to look at. <laughs> It's similar to the shot from when he was fighting Mahito, where just like occasionally Yuji just has these amazing shots where he just looks like a fucking monster in the shadows, <laughs> ready to annihilate these dudes. And he does. Also, like when he like punches his little penis thing, they also try and build up like he actually had a secret all along. The problem is, is that he was very clever, but that doesn't matter when the other person is clearly in a different rank from you and Yuji just beats the shit out of them. <laughs> Uh-huh. It just absolutely ruins his day. Yep. It's fantastic. Good stuff and perfectly acceptable. Um, some other stuff in here, just before we get into the Gojo stuff. I think this is also the start of the Maybay having a weird relationship with her brother, right? Yes. Yeah, this is the start of it. This is the part where everyone was like, uh, <laughs> Pa can't, hands up, hold up. <laughs> Let's see more about Mei Mei before you start 100% throwing everything about her. Be <laughs> 100% dedicated to her. Um, it ends up being perfectly fine. I think it ends up being a little bit more annoying later on, but it's definitely just a very protective brother here. I did like the little bit here, and I think it goes into a little later where the brother was like, you need to show more respect. Thank you very much. <laughs> he just like very quickly goes like, you know what? Maybe he's right on this one. Let me show some quick respect. And I think that's perfectly fine. And yeah, Gojo at the end when he takes off the... First of all, wouldn't it be... Because they also make it pretty clear that the people can only see that Gojo is with like... They can only see two people on the tracks, but some people can say they see four. Which is, I guess, the people who can actually see Cursed Spirits a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that shot where he's just like... He takes off the the i don't know what the the like the rat and they're not wraps he takes off his like actually what the fuck is the thing that he wears that he his shields blindfold? His, his blindfold there you go thank you very much it's not really a blindfold because he like uses it for his no i'm thinking of kakashi i'm maybe i'm just being a dumbass either way no, he, it's i think they do say that he uses it for that reason because it like his eyes are yeah sensitive or something i don't remember why he uses it because it, it, it looks cool <laughs> that's why he uses that's it. what I, that's what i would think of but either way when he takes off the blindfold and he's like oh yeah i'm sorry that you thought that this was gonna be enough to save you <laughs> it is not it's a really cool uh way to be like yes there they have they have shown their plan he has seen their plan and he said i expected better that is not gonna do enough <laughs> and it's a really cool way to end the episode uh, and then like he, he also says like uh let me be just clear i'm just surprised that the only thing that i'm not surprised about what you're doing i'm surprised that you thought that, that you could win using this <laughs> which is a great way to uh be like no nah, your, your plan is terrible i don't think you know who the fuck i am and yeah that's how i feel about this episode what about you zen uh it's pretty good it, I, again this is like another fight where i just don't care uh the gojo stuff's really cool the grasshopper stuff is really not um mm. i don't know the 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 shibuya stuff like there's really good tension in it but i think it's almost made a little bit worse by the fact that i know what's happening because i'm just so tuned out of like the dumb silly side stuff because i want the meat so bad because i yeah. know what i'm waiting for yeah, uh, that I watching a, like the yeah. dumb, the dumb grasshopper. I'm like, bro, you just stop. <laughs> the part was like, oh yeah, he did fight a grasshopper. <laughs> yeah, he sure fucking did fight a grasshopper, didn't he? Yeah, when I think of all the stuff that happens in Shibuya, the things that I forget are typically, yeah, that's right, he fought a grasshopper. <laughs> but that's because it that also doesn't last very long. He fights him like for a chapter or two, right? If even that, yeah. and then they get into the... I think it the... might have been one chapter, maybe two. Yeah, it's it's not much. Which, to be fair, they spent exactly as much time as they would need to on this guy. It's like, mm, like 10 minutes of a 20-something minute episode, which is fair enough for a fight. Very easy, get in, get out, and then very quickly they're going to start building up. Now, the funny thing is, is that the next thing, the next episode that's coming up, I could have swore... It lasted longer in the manga, but maybe that was just in my head. I was reading it going, like, what happens next? What happens next? What, you know what I mean? 
where like mm-hmm. it feels like in my head it's like there's no way you can do that in an entire like episode what happens next and then they do it and i'm like damn was it really just that much <laughs> i could have swore it was a lot more actually funny enough the the wiki shows us what uh, this was adapted from uh 83 84 85 86 87 and 88 okay so that's not that many chapters then mm, interesting but yeah uh, I'm definitely with you. I'm like waiting, waiting in anticipation for the big stuff that happens in Shibuya, and then also having to deal with like the <laughs> the thing that is not the meaty things. It is the stuff on the side that also happened during this arc <laughs> that I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> Grasshopper Man. Yep, Grasshopper Man. Yeah, I honestly like forgot Grasshopper Man existed, and then I read this and I was like, damn. Grasshopper, grasshopper man. man grasshopper man is here doing grasshopper things that's crazy <laughs> that's crazy i that's swear to god so we... crazy there's a grasshopper here fighting and then like there's fucking twitter discourse about it and i'm like dude yeah, you can't actually give a shit about the grasshopper <sighs> don't, discourse. yeah don't there's so much better discourse you could potentially have for over Jujutsu guys in don't have it over the grasshopper man let's let's all accept the fact that there is occasionally in an arc a fight that happens and you go, oh yeah, this happened in this arc too. <laughs> Where you're just like, ah oh, yeah. Like, does anyone really think about when Vegeta fought like fucking uh, Kui Kui or whatever his name was? Nah, not it's just, really. It's just Kui, isn't it? I think it's, it's just Kui. It, it might just be Kui. I well, might no. be adding the Kui. There's, there's Kui and there's Pui Pui. They're two different There people. you go. That's who I'm confused. I, I fused them. My bad. Dragon Ball Fusions. I just made a new character for your game, Dokkan. Um... Kui, but no one, like, imagine that happening today, where, like, Vegeta fought Kui, and he fucking blows him up with dirty fireworks, and then imagine having an entire discourse about Vegeta blowing up Kui. It just doesn't matter, my guy. <laughs> it's fine. We just move on. But it's one of those things where it's like, that that does happen in this arc, and you kind of do have to spend some time talking about it. It is canon. You can't just ignore it because if, it actually would be worse if they just skipped it because then you have people going like, I can't believe they skipped Kogai. He's my favorite character. <laughs> I love him. How could they do him a disservice? And that's actually actively worse than just uh, doing it and it being just kind of being like boring, I guess. <sighs> but yeah, Grasshopper, man. Let's move on to the good stuff, Zen. Episode 33, The Shibuya Incident gate open go ahead as i mark down on here how much time we spent talking about grasshopper man <laughs> uh, more like gas so... hopper man am i right <laughs> let me be his yeah, number pretty one much. Yeah. <laughs> let me be his hype man real quick real quick put the out goat, the edits goat man the uh, goat pure so, gas this one begins with actually what's a pretty cool um little bit that was from the manga i think it was like a ch- chapter extra in the manga mm-hmm. where it was like what is gojo to you and everyone kind of gives their own little take on who or what he is and the unanimous conclusion at the end is no matter what he is to you or anyone else he is the strongest um mm-hmm. then we cut to gojo fighting jogo and hanami at the same time um and he he says like i'm gonna kill you two first <laughs> because <laughs> I already know you. I'm gonna kill you first. Um, they're like, "Oh yeah, you want to like?" They're just trying to like talk tough, and they're kind of backing off. And then jo- Gojo, in just the coldest line ever, just drops down to where they are and was like, "Aren't you the ones who said not to run away?" And he just starts beating <laughs> the shit out of them. He rips Jogo's arm off. Um, they realize that uh, Gojo figured out that he doesn't need like the limitless won't really work right now, so he like is touching them basically. Um, so Hanami's like, aha, uh-huh, okay. Then that's, uh, I can just use my special ability. Um, Hanami doesn't realize that by turning off domain amplification that they don't have any protection really anymore. Um, Jogo turns around and is like, don't. And then Gojo gives like the feral, like, aha, face. Uh, and grabs Hanami's little branches and just rips them out of her eyes, which is crazy. It's um, so brutal. Rips them out of their eyes, and then uh, they Choso tries to like interfere with the blood, and it just doesn't work, and it gets bounced off by uh, Infinity. Um, Hanami and Jogo try to attack again and neutralize his technique with domain amplification. It does not work, um, and he starts to like expand his technique uh, and targets the injured Hanami. 
and Jogo's trying to get him to stop, and he just absolutely doesn't, and literally grinds Hanami against the wall until Hanami is goop. Just destroyed against the wall. Uh, and then we get the awesome scene where he turns around and he goes, next, <laughs> and looking at <laughs> Jogo. Um, then the prison realm gets thrown down, and um, it says we have to keep Gojo uh, within range of it for a minute. And Jogo's like, we, that, it, literally, we cannot do that. There's no way we can do that. And it's like, no, 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 I got a plan. Uh, so they they do the, the whole thing where um, they have, like, a bunch of humans. And so he's like, ah, you can't, you can't fight us and, you know, save them all at the same time. And they have that little bit about, like, Gojo's not like Yuji. He has these this level of, like, acceptable loss he's willing to endure um, that Yuji would not be. And they, they bank on the fact that he won't use his domain expansion because he thinks that acceptable losses would be, like, people killed by enemies, right? Like, people that I don't save is different from people that I kill. So they're saying that he won't... They explain it in a really clunky way. But basically they're saying he's willing to accept people getting killed by them, but he's not willing to accept having to kill people to get them. And then he just ends up doing his domain expansion. It's really um, good, too, because they go like, are it's you so serious? Cool. <laughs> yeah. They have a reaction to like, what? <laughs> um, he he drops the domain expansion for 0. 0.2 seconds, and Gojo's like, this is a, a rough estimate of how long someone could withstand being inside the domain without, like, becoming brain dead basically um it paralyzes everybody uh on the floor and then the including like the the weak ones but the stronger spirits kind of wake up quickly so gojo sprints around and then just starts ripping all of their heads off <laughs> it's really funny he just keeps grabbing their heads and ripping them off um as he's like sprinting around the room um and then the prison realm is on the floor. Uh, it gets opened up, and then Gojo goes to move away from it. Um, and then he hears Kenjaku mimicking Geto, and then that causes basically an amount of time that is within like that, like a minute or whatever a that he had to stand mind. there. It passes in his brain, yeah, because he like flashes back through all those years. Um, and then the prison realm traps him, and then he's like. Uh, Oh, I can't believe you figured out it was me. And he reveals himself as the the brain, the brain with teeth. Um, and then he's like, now that you're gone, nobody can possibly stop me. And Gojo's like, don't forget about Yuta and everyone else. And the guy's like, ah, Yuta sucks. <laughs> the guy's a <laughs> loser. Uh, and then he, I think he literally says, that, Yuta uh, is not you. <laughs> so yeah, Yuta fun. ain't you, bro. Um, Forever and mimicking then a all little of communication. Twitter. <laughs> for real uh, a little communication device sticks on Yuji's ear and then uh, it's Mechamaro and he's like listen they got Gojo they got him <laughs> <laughs> it's so over it's never been more over than it's been right now at this exact moment <laughs> he is gone <laughs> and yeah that is the end of this episode and the next episode uh, should be going up by the time that this is already released but let's talk about this one Man, I can't believe that this only happened in one, two, three, four, five. You know what it was is that there was, um, it starts in a little bit in chapter 85, then it goes 88, 89, 90, 91, okay. But it's hard to believe that all this happened in the span of just like five chapters, basically. It, if even that, because it's not even every single page from that chapter. Um, but it's absolutely some of the, the coolest shit ever. It really just shows how... How, like, important Gojo is to the society that he exists. And that he really is, as they say at the beginning, he's the strongest. He It is just, like, no denying what he does here. It's just unbelievable. It is crazy. When he fucking rips out those eye branches, it's borderline, like, it's visceral. You see him pop out the socket, and then the way he's also taunting. Yeah, it's gross. And it, like... It looks like ripping someone's eye out and like having all the goop that the eye is connected to rip out behind it. It's super nasty. Yeah, it's so so nasty. And then the way that he's just like taunting afterward is like, you know, I'm I'm surprised you're still doing this. I know you can keep going, but can your injured friend keep going? And then he goes up and he's like, he's pressing on uh, Hanami. And then go and then <laughs> Joe goes like, stop it. And he's like, gonna say like, I'm gonna burn the humans. You better stop. 
You better, and then eventually, like, it, they enter, like, this staring contest of, like, oh, yeah, which one of us is actually going to blink first? And the answer is Jogo blinks first. And he puts down his fire, and then Hanami uh, gets fucking destroyed. <laughs> Com- just obliterated, yeah. 100% just non existent anymore. And it also sets up this hilarious scene later where um, Maido finally shows up. He's like, um, we should keep some humans that we can hunt in the forest for later. And he's like... Um, can I burn down the entire forest with them in it? And then he goes like, oh, you know, Hanami won't be very happy about that. And he goes like, Hanami's dead. And he goes like, wait, really? Like, what happened? <laughs> I was gone for so long. Are you serious? The Hanami just fucking died? <laughs> but yeah, Hanami, Hanami dies and the way he goes next and the way he's also fighting while also keeping in track of all the people that are around him and the way he's also just like, some of the people are starting to wise up and they're getting away from me. So you actually don't have as much time as you think you do because the amount of people here is not actually enough to save you from this unbelievable murdering that I'm about to do to you the second I get close to you. <laughs> and yeah, the the fact that the when the plan finally comes to comes to and just a buttload of people come down and they're just like saying like listen, we know Gojo, he won't do this. He would never his domain is so strong that it would kill these people. He'll never accept it, even though the right answer here is to do the domain, kill us all, and then the incident is done. And then he ends up coming up with a plan that is completely like no human being would be able to do. The fact that he kills all these dudes in less than, what was it, uh, not even a second, it's 0.22 seconds or so? 0.2 seconds, yeah. 0.2 seconds, and the way that they show how fucking quick he, he's doing, he has him, he's having like a flash moment. And he's just going around going, <laughs> and he's like beheading these wolves so quick. So yeah, insane. He, he's like doing, it's like a funny looking sprint too, because he's bent super low to the ground, and he's like his arm, he looks like the flash if the flash was leaned forward really far. <laughs> It looks like the 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 Flash is having like <laughs> some kind of drug induced haze, and he's like trying to kill all these quick people so quick. And also, you have to get, take into the fact that he's also making sure not to kill any humans as well, as he's killing all of them. And it's also a super cool scene because while he's doing this, there's a narrator basically explaining everything. Where it's like, oh yeah. This is only a rough estimate about how much Gojo thinks how many of these people would survive if they end if they if it ever lasted any longer than this they would likely suffer like permanent brain damage just because in this small amount of time these people are experience experiencing the infinite basically this would destroy a human mind and the fact that he did this all the people who were in the Shibuya incident who were under the domain after like they said two months they were basically back and they were perfectly fine after that. It's a miracle, basically, that he was able to save these people in such an insane way. It is crazy. It is uh, next level. It is reminds you why people love Gojo so much. <laughs> because he's able... He writes them into these situations where it's like, Gojo can truly never win in this situation. And then he fucking does in the most baller way possible. Yep, every time. <laughs> every time. So good. And yeah. But once he gets out of it, they realize the one trick that they have to stop Gojo, which is finally the the reveal where he goes like, oh yeah, he doesn't know that I'm Ghetto. Um, Ghetto, my bad, not Ghetto. That would be completely different. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. But yeah, he the when he stops him, and then like, it, the voice actor does a fantastic job in here, because you really do hear it in like Gojo's voice, where he's like, what? That's a copy. That's not a copy. What the fuck? fuck it, it, it like you can actually feel in his voice he's just like that's not you no what so you can understand where it's like i think it's a little bit weird where they're like and get a minute passed in his mind that's good enough for the magic box <laughs> to, to curse him away mm-hmm. yeah he's like yeah, yeah you know what it's whatever <laughs> it, it, it's fine you know <laughs> the box says the box knows inside his mind it took a minute i'm ready i'm good and let's go and then when he's trapped up there and he's, like, not really freaking out and he's, like, just trying to figure out as much information as he can, I think it's really cool where he's like, that's clearly not him. You're not him. He's like, you're right. I'm a little brain guy. What's up? You didn't burn his body, so I get this body now. Bitchin'. Uh, and now we're, I basically win because you're the only thing that can stop me. He's like, you do know that someone, that the person who actually killed the person in that body is still around. And he's like, eh, Whatever. 
he doesn't have any feats. <laughs> Show me his feats, <laughs> <Yeah>. Gojo. <laughs> his his uh his page his power scaler feats page is way empty, bro. It's way empty. I don't know if you know, but he's not balling in the same area that I am. I think I got this. <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> And yeah, it ends with him being sealed, and I think it's the ultimate sign of just like, oh shit, literally the strongest person in this entire society has been locked away, and that's the start of the arc. That's how things are going. The one, the person that they said, he's got this, it's okay, he'll figure it out, has just been got. Where do you go from there? And I think it's an amazing setup, and yeah, the... Fuck... So good. What? Before I say anything else, how do you feel about this episode, Zen? It's super good, dude. This is like all the coolest parts of Gojo and Shibuya all at one time. It's like one pure, concentrated episode of the coolest shit you've ever seen in your life. It's so good. Everything about it's good. It's so uh, good. The the feral Gojo moments were perfect. Exactly what you wanted to see. Uh, him turning Hanami into paste was fucking cool as hell. Um, ah, dude, all of it's sick. All of it's so good. It really is. There's just no amount of ways for us to say. We could go on and on about how fucking unbelievably sick this is. And we could. But unfortunately, this is where uh, the yeah, dolphin... Yeah, could. But yeah, we gotta... <laughs> we gotta move on. And before we move on, it's time for the dolphin noise to kick in. Because Zen... Alright, well, uh, the dolphins are done, Zen. <laughs> We're dolphins. Dolphins have re- relaxed. We're relaxed here, and if I sound completely different, it's because that conversation has drained me of ever talking about anything <laughs> more after that. I wonder how long that ended up going for. It'll be interesting to see what I'm actually editing it. But anyway, that's the end of Shonen Archive this week, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, uh, the epi- we will be back next week. Hopefully, actually, I don't work next week. So we'll be back with a shorter one just talking about episode 34, and we'll be back on the normal schedule. Um, hopefully, we should be talking about Koriko next, depending. It is very late, so I don't know how you're feeling up for the I'm remainder. I'm good to keep going. You're good to keep going? All right. If, you, if get, you're good, I'm good. I'll get some water, and I'll keep on going then. We will finally get to talk about Koriko's basketball. We're it's able- been so long. It has been so long. And uh, we'll have to wait another week for Gintama because we need to see six episodes this time. But hopefully it should be back next week. And since I have... It's very bad that uh, because of the strike I have less work. But it does mean I get to watch more anime. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it works. It does. There was a brief moment where I said, like, you know what? Maybe I should pop up the One Piece anime. I know I have to rewatch this for when we have to cover it for Shonen Archive, but maybe I can just have it on in the background, and that's what I knew. I was truly lost, and I had too much time. <laughs> if I got, if I'm starting to say, like, unironically, maybe it's time to start One Piece anime, maybe I've gone too far. But anyway, also that live action was pretty good, so that also It is good. I, I was very surprised with how good it is. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah. All of it? Not all of it, but I watched a lot of clips from it from like oh, the okay. last couple episodes. Okay, okay. It, it is very well done. Because I was going to say, if you had seen all of it, then we should have... All right, finally, we can do one without D-Free in it of us talking <laughs> about... <laughs> I can piece. finish it if you want to do that. We can do it next week. Sure, that sounds good to me. Well, well, we can do that and we can do a quick like, hey, here's what they talk about in the uh, the live action. And that would be pretty cool. Oh, that would be, be sweet. I would love to do that. We're doing that next week, everyone. <laughs> This is I've I'm I only have Zen for so long into One Piece. I gotta take these moments where I can. <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna be it for this week in Shown in Archive time. Uh, if you want to have more Zen, if you want to hear Zen talk about what's currently going on in Shonen Jump, then you should go over and watch Shonen and Chill. You can finally hear about uh, the Sword Me Man, uh, Kag- Kagubuchi. Kagurubachi. Kagurubachi. That's right. Oh my god, dude, it was so funny. So, uh huh. I don't know if you watch the show or not, but um, Kagurubachi. We no, it's turn and chill. Um, but we we did this episode. This was the one that everyone was excited to hear because they know that we both didn't like the Gojo chapters. Uh huh. Um, so everyone was like, "Oh, I'm so ready for the JJK section." So what we did is we didn't timestamp this episode, so people didn't just skip immediately to the JJK <laughs> section because we thought it would be funny. 
Um, and so one of the earliest comments on the video is a timestamp. And it's someone says, I found it. It's what everyone's waiting for. And when you click the timestamp, it goes to the Kagurabachi <laughs> section. <laughs> I started dying. Dude, That's did timestamp the JJK party timestamp the Kagurabachi <laughs> section? That's pretty good. Uh, How is Kagurabachi, by the way? It's not bad. I mean, it's it gets memed a lot. It's a like it's it's a early chapter of a show in an anime. It's pretty edgy. Like the main guy I has a couple cringy it. lines. Yeah. Um, like uh, he he has a scar, and like you know you could get that scar like removed, you know. And he's like, I I keep it so that when I wake up in the morning and look in the mirror, I can wake up with fresh hate, <laughs> uh, which is pretty edgy. But then you know edgy. you go back and you read Naruto, and you remember twelve year old Sasuke is saying, I hate a lot of things, and there's <laughs> nothing I really like, and I've sworn to kill a man. <laughs> and it's like, oh okay, wait a minute, it's not so weird. It is not it is not the weirdest. Yeah, I remember a friend of mine saying like. He was shocked when he said, "Like you haven't read it." I'm like, "I don't." I felt I felt weird. I, I feel weird. I'll just say that it's like I don't want to. I don't want to have an opinion of it, but I also know don't want to shit on it because it seems like that manga guy that is de- is like definitely being like, "Oh man, so many people are into it. That's awesome." And I'm like, "I don't want to shit on you, my guy. You don't deserve this. Keep doing you. I hope <laughs> I hope you, you. I hope great things come for you. I hope this actually is the jump start of you uh, doing great things. But it definitely put a spin of like, oh man, I feel weird about making fun of things that I don't see. Um, and that's what I feel like what most people are doing with Kagura Bunchy. <laughs> but anyway, maybe one day I'll sit down. It is very just like literally two chapters out and who knows with Sean Jump it might be cancelled in 40 but I think enough people have memed it that it might at least make it to the hundreds. Yeah, it's it's not as bad. Everyone's like trying to meme it and be like, oh, it's the Morbius of manga but it's not. It's fine. It's pretty good. It's, no, it's, it's not like amazing. It's like average. It's not the Morbius of manga because I've watched Morbius. So if it, <laughs> so if it was actually the Morbius of manga, I would have seen it. It's not that level. I think it's actually just a... <laughs> People lunged, uh, like, put their teeth into something that maybe did it <laughs> wasn't full. Listen, I have a lot of appreciation for crap, and I can feel right away that this isn't crap. I feel like this is just okay. That's how I can tell. <laughs> I felt my third sense of, like, listen, if this was actually shit, I would be all over it. But it's not. It's just probably okay. <laughs> and that's what it sounds like it is. <laughs> anyway, you can hear more about that over on Zen's. And you can also hear more uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Let me tell you, I would be caught up with it to hear all about what's currently going on. <laughs> that would be very interesting to see, for sure. Not surprising to hear a lot of people would be very interested to see about, uh, hear you talk about the most latest chapter. And yeah, you can follow uh, me to f- have more me content. I haven't been uploading as much, but that's because I've been playing Mortal Kombat 1. And the game crashes just enough to make me go, I can't upload videos on this. So, unfortunate. Probably, yeah, probably I can't. Now I put the graphics down a little bit. I'm not sure how many people want to see me do like 50% rating combos and then get destroyed by a Baraka online. <laughs> but <laughs> I definitely could. Fate Samurai is going to be coming out pretty soon, and uh, I'll probably upload a couple videos on that. I hear it's a I hear it's a 50 hour game though. So. That's a long time to dedicate to a series, but we'll see. Uh, and yeah, Fugo. It's Fugo video still going up. Do, you know what's funny? I also I recently read recently because a lot of the stuff was going around with Jujutsu Kaisen that apparently um, Jujutsu Kaisen was heavily influenced by Fate, and the dude who writes Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, who I'm forgetting the name of right now, he's a big fan of Nasu's writing. <laughs> And I was like, no way. And then I read the quote. He's like, oh, yeah, uh, Fade Zero, fantastic. It's like, oh, man, you being into Fade Zero explains so much about Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> so great. I was like, that's the craziest thing. I would never have expected. The, this, just to further proof, if, uh, for everyone, for anyone who doesn't know, Fade Zero is also what got me into a lot of the, the Fate universe itself. It was that good that it got me into everything. And I don't even like everything in the Fate universe. <laughs> that just shows you how strong that one anime is <laughs> and how well I liked it. Uh, so it was very cool to hear him like, oh, yeah, 
that also explains some of your fights because some of your fights would only make sense because uh, if you were a big fan of Fate, they do stuff like that in there, so that makes sense. But anyway, you can follow for more stuff I by me by me by going into my channel. That's it for Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back Saturday, actually, enough to talk about Kuroko's basketball. And hopefully next week we'll be back with Gintama, Jujutsu Kaisen, and the One Piece live action. And one guy is really waiting for us to get back to Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Zen. I think really? it, might, it might be time. He says, it might I, be time. He says, I re- let me tell you guys, I really appreciate all the Shonen Archive. I, I appreciate that he started with that saying, like, I really like you guys talking about this. But I would love it if you guys returned to GX. And I said, you know what? I literally am obsessed with Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So anytime. Anytime, I, buddy. I think it might be time. I think it might be coming close to it. Well, for, let's continue on Kuroko. And uh, as uh, Jujutsu Kaisen is slowing down a little bit, I think it might be ready to get our game on and get back to it. But we'll see. Until next time, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace.